Well, an Afghan villager risking everything to save Navy SEAL Marco Sutrell and the real life heroics highlighted in a Hollywood movie. Mohammed Gulab never hesitated to help a stranger, but now he needs one uh, so it will help himself. After the movie's release, he and his family uh, were targeted by the Taliban. They've since left the country and are seeking asylum in the U.S. Michael Wiles heard about this story and took it pro bono. He's the attorney representing him right now. Michael, uh, why would wh you jump in here? On principle, this isn't the first hero that we've had the privilege of representing. I helped Kwame James, the gentleman who subdued Richard Reed, the shoe bomber. There are a cadre of people out there, and you can look at them as assets in the war of intelligence or the war of uh, terrorism, that have this instinct to want to help and do good. And here was one of ours, the best of the best of our society, a Navy SEAL that was felled, and this gentleman took him under his wing in his village, and the whole village watched him. They reached out to you? Reached out to me this past summer and explained that he was in America. Things got weird, and I don't know the politics, but he had left, and now RPGs were going through his home. A couple of months ago, a governor sent a letter, issued a letter, a death warrant against uh, my client, indicating that on a arrest on site or kill on site kind of demand. Right. Do, is, there, is there a sense uh, that there might be people behind the scenes that are manipulating him? Because he has had two opportunities to come here. He has been here for long periods of time. The paperwork's been done, and he's insisted on going back. I don't understand the politics of the movie, the book deals, the visits to America. All I can tell you is I take this guy for what he is, and that is somebody who saved one of us and is now trying to get out. The difficulty that we had was the American embassy in Afghanistan was a target, and a high-priced high person like this, where the Taliban wanted to kill him, mm -hmm. imperiled not only himself, but the agents and the methods and procedure in extracting him out of right. Afghanistan. So I'm less concerned about the politics of this. He's a hero. Marcus Luttrell is a hero. And my job here is to raise the banner of all these individuals right. and keep immigration laws right. helping people who do good for us internationally. Absolutely. And he did a wonderful thing. But if you read the book, you see the whole village did the whole thing. They, they knocked it down to just him. Beautiful. It's, it's a great thing. Beautiful. But do you think that the Taliban had to hear about a movie to understand that he should be targeted? I don't know what they heard or why they're doing this. I can just tell you that we want to reward people that step up for our brothers and sisters right. in harm's way. And the sooner we do that internationally, a red carpet should go to somebody who did like this instinctively. Right. Like my other client who was sleeping on a plane and then sat on Richard Reed. Oh, unbelievable. This guy pulled the somebody, minor league basketball yeah, player. Yeah, this guy pulled you know, him right. out of a waterfall and gave him safe haven. Right. The whole village, as far as I'm concerned, earned our trust. And you do a lot of great things. You're one of, the most, one of the most respected immigration attorneys there is. But is there a sense, Michael, that you might be being manipulated by people behind the scenes? You know, because here's a guy who does not speak English, had two opportunities to come here, was featured on 60 Minutes, went to Disneyland, and was homesick and wanted to go back. I appreciate, first of all, your compliment, and second of all, I'm not as naive. The truth is that nobody has asked me to raise him money more than for his subsistence internationally, and the ethics of my profession would now not allow me to entangle myself in any money. I don't see anything untoward. I see everything genuine, and I refuse on principle. I'm an observant Jew, and, you know, we're biblical cousins. And it's right. an awkward circumstance, generally, to deal right. with these kinds of experiences. And you're but doing I see, I see this as a measure of principle, and you have to... I'm so impressed by the hundreds of emails that we're getting internationally right. to see that this guy's given a home. And I don't blame the world for being curious or thinking that there's something below... You know, right. like an iceberg below what we can see, but I haven't seen anything. Right. Yeah, and, and you're the guy doing this for free, just wanting to help him out. But if he does get here and he doesn't speak English and he has no skills and is, does not understand our culture, how would, he, uh, how would he survive? This is the greatest legacy, the greatest experiment in democracy. We are a nation of immigrants. Who do you want to have here? How, our founding fathers established right. uh, that very stock of trade. All of our citizens should have the instinct that this gentleman had to save somebody. Right. 
He'll learn English. He'll be productive. I have about a dozen we'll people see. who offered him jobs. Right, and we see because he did get two other op uh, two other offers to come here from from very great people like you, and he turned them down. Well, so we'll see, see what happens. Scenes. Pleasure. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thank Appreciate you. it. Pleasure. All right, uh, ten minutes before the bottom of the hour. Coming up straight ahead, we're promised health care costs would go down, but. Our